Any questions? Well, thank you, Jorn. That's a really awesome presentation. If you'd like to raise your hand to ask a question, we can get a microphone to you. I don't really see any questions coming up, ah, so wait, we have one? Okay. <laughs> yeah, please stand up. Sorry. Uh, you said you scanned the whole internet for the command and control service. Yeah. But how much power does it take to scan the whole internet? It's um, huge. Yeah, well, it takes about two days. It's, uh, for you have a 32-bit IP space in theory. But some uh, ranges are private, like uh, 10.000, uh, 192, 186, 172, that whatever. So you can already remove those. And then even then, it takes uh, two days. If you have a fast connection, and uh, we also, I think, we modified the kernel a little bit of uh, that machine to handle uh, a lot of requests more efficiently. OK, thanks. That assumes a single connection. Yeah. I I think we had more connection, but I'm not entirely sure about it. It was uh, my colleague did that part. But yeah, you're probably right. I think we had uh, more connections. I think we had about four or five IPs. OK, so any more questions? If you could please stand up. We're, uh, oh. <laughs> Um, you're talking about uh, the money that uh, was in danger, the 300 million, the 1 billion. Mm -hmm. Can you also uh, give an estimate of like how much money the effort costs to keep on hunting this? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I cannot. It's, um, uh, the thing is, uh, with an operation like this, you need to have like, some people that write the malware. Those are, li those are already a few that need to get paid. Then you need to have the ones that are actually watching like how the systems are working. You know, it's a boring job. Somebody has to do it. And then there is also a whole money mule gang involved. I, uh, I, meant the other side of the I meant the other side of the equation. How much do you spend <laughs> hunting this down? We? Yeah. How much it costs us? Uh, yeah, society. Society, well, it's, uh, uh, in the end, it's all money from you anyway, because the bank makes money from your <laughs> 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 I mean, the bank makes money from your money. Uh, they have to pay that for the insurance. So if the insurance uh, pays out, then it probably means that uh, the bank has to pay more insurance, or the banks. So that's already a part of the cost. And then there are also our costs, but those we, do not re we haven't charged anybody anything for all the research uh, that we did. We uh, distributed all the reports to the banks so they could protect themselves, but yeah, I, I don't know. It's uh, it was it's difficult to calculate. Let's put it like that. Well, then I assume your company under a million. I I don't have any idea. I mean, uh, yeah, we get paid our salary. We need to pay for the for the flights from, uh, for example, from Moscow to The Hague, where Europol is located. Uh, you need to pay for a hotel, those kind of costs. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Anyone else with questions? I see a taker on the other end of the room. You're telling us a lot about the technical uh, investigation. Is there any inf inf investigation into the organized crime part of it? Or? Yes. And that's all I can say, because it's, uh <laughs> 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 as you can imagine, uh, we work together with um, the law enforcement agencies, so we shared our data with them. And basically then it's up to them. Uh, they can come back with some questions to us, we will try to answer them, we keep giving them new data. And they are doing their research, and you know, that's all about I can say. I mean. Let's put it like this. If you rob for $300 million banks in Russia and the Ukraine, you can bet that they are after you. But what the status is, I, yeah, I cannot say anything about it. Okay. Um, 
we have room for more questions. Shall I ask my question then? Sure. Oh, I'm a Bitcoin guy. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm not very, uh, very warm about fractional reserve banking, which I think is part of the problem here because most of the money is fictional on those banks. Um, so my question is, what uh, has been uh, well tuned, what has been done to protect uh, the digital money? So the, um, well, the digital money, basically. <laughs> the money that doesn't have uh, a real fiat currency locked down in a vault somewhere. <laughs> yeah, I cannot tell you how the bank has the real money like their gold, but I can tell you what they did with their IT security. If you're a bank, you have to be compliant with many standards. Uh, one of them is PCI, the payment card industry standard, which says what you basically need to do. And many banks were, but the problem with this campaign was that the attackers were so smart, they will find a way to circumvent all those measures you take. Uh, what the banks should have done is install the latest patches for Microsoft Office because they used exploits in Office. If they would have done that, there was no chance uh, the attackers would have gotten in. But to give you an example about how smart they were, at one bank, you needed to insert a token and then you could do some transactions. If you have done a transaction, you had to go to a separate network, put your USB in there, and then the transactions were actually done. Good. Well, the attackers were on the PC of the guy with the token. And when you use Windows with a remote desktop protocol, you can only log in to one server at a time. So those guys, they hacked that server, they changed the flag that multiple, that's the same guy can log in at the same time. So they just waited till the guy with the token was there. He logged in, they logged in as well. They entered some additional transactions the guy didn't see anything, it was put on the USB, he went to the separate network and the transactions were done. Yeah, it's difficult to protect yourself wow. against these things. Okay, um, looking for other questions. <laughs>